Once again, the friend nodded his horse's head while continuing to munch away on the salad of tomatoes, peppers, that were stuffing into him. And then he started speaking a slight Spanish accent and suggested that he and Rompert should meet the day after next at 8 in the morning under the porch of the cathedral. Two more days, Rompert observed. It's not so easy, said Raoul. People have to be found. The house nodded again and Rompert accepted without any show of Felix. The rest of the lunch was spent looking for a subject of conversation. It all became very easy when Rompert discovered that the horse was footballer. He himself played the game a lot, so they spoke about the French championship and stated that the English professional teams, the W tactic, was passing the ball. At the end of the meal, the horse had become quite excited and started to call Rambert too, which was trying to persuade him that there was no finer place in the team than the center half. You see, he said, the center half is the one who positions the game. And that's what football is all about, Rambert agreed, though he always played center forward. The discussion was interrupted by a radio set which had softly droning the sentimental songs. The announcer on the previous day, the plague had claimed 137 victims. No one among the listeners reacted to this. The man with the horse's head shrugged his shoulders and got up. Raoul and Rambert followed suit. And he was leaving the center half, took Rambert's hand vigorously. And the man named Gonzales, he said. And the two days seemed endless to Rambert. He went to see Raoul and gave him the details amount of what was going on. And he accompanied the doctor to one of his house calls. He said goodbye at the front door beyond which the suspected victim was waiting. And in the corridor there was the sound of voices, hurrying steps, and the family had being told that their doctor had arrived. I hope Teru won't be long, Rayu muttered. And seeming tired, the epidemic progressed too quickly, Rambert asked. Rayu replied that that was not the problem. Even the graph was leveling out. And just as they did not have enough weapons to which to fight the plague. We don't have the equipment, he said. Generally, in an army, there is world in the mud to run short. And in the replaced by man, we don't have enough men either. The doctors and health workers have been brought in from outside. Yes, Rayu said, ten doctors and around a hundred men. This is a lot, apparently, but it's barely enough to present state of the disease. If the epidemic spreads, it will be too few. Rayu listened to the noises from inside and smiled at Rambert. Yes, he said. You ought to hurry up and get out. The clouds passed over Rambert's face. You know, he said in a dull voice. There's not a reason I'm going, Rayu answered. And then he knew that, and Rambert went on. I don't think I'm a coward most of the time, at least. I have had that opportunity to test it. Only there are some ideas I cannot bear. The doctor looked directly at him. You'll see her again, he said. Perhaps, but I cannot bear the idea of this going on and her getting older all the time. At 30, at 30, you're starting to get old and you have to take advantage of everything. You don't know if you can't understand that. Ryu said something quietly and he thought he understood what Teru came up with exactly. You s I've asked... Penelou to join us. Well, said the doctor. He thought it over and said yes. I'm glad, said the doctor. I'm glad to find out that he's better than his sermon. Everyone is like that, said Teru. You just need to give them a little opportunity. He smiled and winked at Rayu. It's my task in life that to give opportunities. Excuse me, said Rambert. I may be, le I may be leaving. The thirst the Thursday when he was due to meet Gonzalez, Rambert went to the porch of the cathedral five minutes before eight and the air was still quite cool. Little round white clouds were traveling across the sky which will shortly be swallowed by the heat. The vague scent of humidity was still rising from the lawn, dry as they went. 
the sun rising behind the houses of the east. Only worn John of Arc, fully gliding helmet and the decorated in the square. The clock struck eight. Rambert walked back and forth a little under the empty porch. A faint sound chatting in the emergency with in mix of the old perfumes and cellars of incense. Suddenly the singing stopped. A dozen small black shapes came out of the church and began to trot along the direction of the town. Rambert was starting to get impatient. Other black forms were walking up a board stairway towards the porch. He lit a cigarette, though through the that perhaps it was not proper placed for it. A quarter past eight, the cathedral organ started to play softly. Robert went into the dark vault. For after a moment, he could make out the nave black shapes that had gone ahead of him. They were all gathered in one corner around a sort of improvised altar in which someone had set the statue of St. Roch, hesitantly carved in one of the town workshops. Kneeling down, they seemed a little more hunched and shriveled now, lost in the semi-darkness like pieces of con congealed shadow. Scarcely more supplemental here and there were the mist of which they hovered. Above them, the organ played endless variations. As Robert came out, Gonzalez was already going back down the stairway towards the town. I thought you were gone, he told the journalist. It's normal. He explained that he had been expecting his friend for another meeting place, not far away. When he had arranged the meeting, them at ten to eight, and he waited for twenty minutes in vain. There's some problem, that's for sure. Things don't always go smoothly on our line of work. He suggested another reservoir. The next day, in the same time, in front of the war memorial, Robert sighed and pushed back his hat. It's nothing, Gonzales assured him. Thanks to all the moves and crosses and pass, and have to make before your score a goal. Of course, Robert agreed, but much only last an hour and a half. War memorial in Iran was situated at the only place from which you can see the sea. A short of promenant, which made the quite short distance, runs along the cliffs overlooking the port. And the following day, Robert first arrived at the meeting place and attentively reading the list of those who had died in the field of honor. A few minutes later, two men came over looking at him without the particular interest, then went over to lean at the part, part of the promenade, seeming altogether absorbed in the contentment of the bare desert quay. Both men were same height, each wearing blue trousers and dark blue, short sleeve pullovers. The journalist moved a short distance away and sat down on a bench where he could keep them in view. This was when he noticed that they could surely not be more than 20 years old. Just then, he saw Gonzalez walking towards him, apologizing. Here are our friends, he said, leaning over towards the young men whom he introduced as Marcel and Louis. From that they looked like they looked very alike, and Robert guessed that they must be brothers. Here we are, said Gonzalez. Now you know each other. We have to make actual arrangements. Marcel and Louis said that their turn was scarcely duty began in two days, and lasted a week. They would have to look out for the most convenient days. Four of them guarded the west gate, and two men were professional soldiers. There were no question of involving them in the business. They could not be trusted, and in any case, it would put up the cost. But occasionally, the two colleagues would go and spend part of the night in the back room of the bar that they knew. So Marcel and Louis suggested to Rambert they should come and stay with them near the grates and wait for someone to come and fetch him. In these circumstances, the cross would be quite easy. But they would have to hurry because the talk recently was selling double security posts outside the town. Robert agreed and hand, handed round them the last cigarette. The, the one of the pair who had yet spoken asked Gonzalez if the matter of the expenses had been settled and if they had to advance. No, said Gonzalez, there's no need. He's a friend. The account would be settled on departure. They fixed the new meeting. Gonzalez suggested dining at the Spanish restaurant the day after next. From there, they could go to the scenery houses. For the first night, he told Robert 
I'll keep you company. The next day, Rump Bear was going up to his room in the hotel when he met Taru on the staircase. I'm going to go see Brayu, Taru said. Would you like to come? Rump Bear hesitated and said, I never know if go I'm getting in his way. I don't think so. He often talks to me about you. The dinner slot and then said, listen, if you have a moment after dinner, however late it is, both of you come to the hotel bar. It depends on him and the plague, said Taru. Even so, at 11 o'clock that evening, Rayu and Taru came into the narrow little bar. About 30 people were there, pressing together, talking very loud voices. Coming into the silence of the stricken town, the new arrival halted, slightly stunned. They understood that the agitation or they saw the spirits and still being served. Rambert was the one at the end of the counter, waving to them from the bar stool. They gathered around, Taru calmly pressed aside the noisy neighbor. You are not worried about drinking alcohol? No, Taru said. Far from it. Rayu sniffed and smelled the bitter herbs of his glass, and then he headed to speak to the Tomats. But what Rambert seemed to care about most was drinking. The doctor could not say if he was drunk, but one or two tables were occupied in the rest of the narrow room. The naval officer with a woman on each arm telling the fat man about the Floyd complexion of the outbreak in the typhus of Cairo. Camps, he said. They set up camps for the natives, with tents for the victims and lines of sentis all around who would open fire in families when they tried to sneak into the old wives' remedies. It was hard but fair. The conversation at the other table was occupied by elegant people with incomprehensible and shallow up to the sound of St. James Family Infernary Blues, pouring out with the gramophone perch of the near ceiling. Are you pleased, Ray, you asked, raising his voice? It's getting close, said Robert. Within a week, perhaps. Pity, Taru said. Why? Taru looked at Ryu. Ah, said the doctor. Taru said that because he thinks you could have been useful to us here. But I understand only too well how much you want to leave. Taru paid it for another round. Robert got off his stool and looked him directly in the face for the first time. How would you have been useful to you? Well, Taru answered, unhurriedly reaching for his glass in the health times. Robert reassured his useful air for a stubborn reflection and got back up in his stool. Don't you think about the teams are any use? Taru said. He had just taken a drink and now was looking closely at Robert. Very useful, said the journalist, drinking in his turn. Ryu noticed that his hand was trembling and decided that, undoubtedly, he was altogether drunk. The next day, when Robert came to the Spanish restaurant for the second time, he passed through the small group of men who had taken chairs outside on the front door where they were enjoying green and gold evening, when the heat was only starting to subside. They were smoking bitter-smelling tobacco inside the restaurant, was almost empty. Robert went and sat down at the table at the back where he first met Gonzales. He was told that the waitress that he would wait. And it was about 7.30, but by bet the men came back to the dining room and settled down at the table. While the orders started to be brought in, the low vault ceiling filled the noise in the cutlery and muffled conversation. At 8, Robert was still waiting. They put on the lights and the new customer sat down at the table. He ordered his dinner, but by 8.30 he had finished without a sign of Gonzales or the two young men. Outside, night was rap falling rapidly. Warm breeze from the sea gently lifted the curtains of the French windows. By 9 o'clock, Robert noticed that the room was empty and that the waitress was looking at him in astonishment. He paid and went out. There was a cafe open across the restaurant. Half past 9, he walked back to the hotel, wondering how on earth he could contact Gonzales when he did not have the man's address. His heart was falling at the idea of having to start the whole business over again. It was at that moment that the night fell full of fleeting ambulance that he would later tell Rayu he knows that all this time he had to some extent forgotten his wife, applying his mind entirely to the search of the breach in the wall and separate them. But it was also um, this moment when the, all the roads were once more blocked they found her once again, the center of his desires. In such a sudden outbreak of pain, he started to run towards the hotel and attempt to flee this dreadful burning which 
nonetheless had carried him, which he was eating away at his temple. However, very early the next day, he went to see Rayu and asked him how he could find Qatar. Only thing left for me, he said, is to follow the same leads. Come tomorrow evening, said Rayu. Taru asked me to invite Qatar. I don't know why he should be here at ten. You come at half past. When Qatar arrived at the doctor the next day, Taru and Rayu were talking about an unexpected cure involving one of the doctor's patients. One out of ten. He was lucky, Taru was saying. Oh well, said Qatar. Then it wasn't plague. They assured him it really had been the disease. It can't be so if he recovered. You know, as well as I do, the plague is merciless. On a whole it is, said Rayu, but if you preserve, you can ha have a pleasant surprising. Qatar laughed. I don't seem to like it. Have you seen the evening figures? Taru, who was giving the man the means of a kindly look, said that he knew the figures and the situation was serious, but what did it prove? It proves that you need still more emergency measures. You've taken them already. Yes, but everyone has taken them on his own account. Qatar looked at Taru without understanding. The other man explained that too many people were not doing anything that the epidemic was everybody's business and that they all had to do their duty. Voluntary health teams were open to all. That's an idea, said Kotar, but won't do any good. The plague is too strong. We'll find out, said Taru patiently, when we've tried everything. Meanwhile, Ryu was at his desk copying some figures. Taru was still looking at the man with means when he shifted about his chair. Why don't you join us, Monsieur Kotar? Kotar was looking offended and picked up a round hat. That's not my job. Well then, with a tone of bravado, in any case, the plague is doing me a favor, so I don't see why I should be involved in getting rid of it. Taru stuck his forehead as though suddenly realizing, of course, I'm forgetting. You would be arrested otherwise. Guitar stared and grabbed the chair as it was about to fall over. Rayu had stopped waiting, writing and was looking at him in a solemn, interested way. Who told you that? said the man of men's. Taru seemed surprised and said, You did, or at least that's what the doctor thought you did, meant. And while Qatar stammered out the uncomprehensible steam of words, suddenly overcome with the uncomprehensible fit of wit rage, Taru added, Don't get excited. Neither the doctor nor I will denounce you. Your background doesn't concern us. And then we've never much like the police. Come now, sit down. The man of means looked at his chair, hesitantly sat down. After a moment, he sighed. It's an old story, he agreed, which he dredged up as though it was all forgotten. But someone talked and called me in and told me to remain available until the inquiry was over. I realized that in that end, they would arrest me. Is he serious to arrest? Depends on what you mean. It's not murder anyway. Poison or forced labor? Guitar seemed to, very downcast. Prison, if I'm lucky. And after the short pause, he went on epithemically. The, it make, it's a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. But I can't stand the idea of being taken in for that. Separated from my home, the way of life, all the people I know. I see, said Taru. It, it, is that why you had the idea of hanging yourself? Yes, a silly idea, of course. Rayu spoke for the first time and told Qatar that he could understand his anxiety, but perhaps everything would work out. Oh, for the first time being, I know I have nothing to fear. I see that you have nothing to jo not join our teams, said Taru. The other man, twisting his hat between his hands, gave him a hesitant look. Don't hold it against me. Certainly not. But at least Taru added with a smile. Try not to spare the microbes knowingly. Guitar protested that I didn't want the plague, and it came of its own accord, and when... The fault was temporarily got him out of the mess, and Robert arrived at the door and added with a lot of emphasis. In any case, I think it's that you won't achieve anything. 